In this video, I'm going to quickly cover the development approaches according to PMI. If you have the Agile Practice Guide on page 18, you'll see something that looks a little like this. So it might be helpful to grab that. And the biggest question I ask myself when picking an approach is, how definable is this work, right? Is this definable work or high uncertainty work? And so this very first one in their chart, predictive is great for when you have a well understood scope, the requirements are known, they're stable, people aren't changing their minds all over the place. Uh, so we're generally not talking about like innovative work that no one's done before where there's lots of ambiguity and uncertainty and all that. No, this might be, and I used orange on here, it might be a construction project, right? And so you'll notice that the requirements are fixed, activities are performed one time, and the delivery is also at the very end, one delivery of everything. And so again, predictive approach has the word predict in it. I could predict the cost and I could predict the timing because I really, really understood there's, a, I understand there's a known end state. And so yes, I'm coming on to make a video when my dogs thought we were gonna go out and you might hear little remindy barks in the background. So that's predictive. Then what you don't see in the chart on page 18, but I'll write in here is that these three in brown are the adaptive approaches. Okay, so here's the, an addition I just added, adaptive approaches. So iterative, incremental, and agile are for when we have dynamic requirements, right? So notice here, dynamic requirements versus the fixed requirements that we saw up there. And then you're gonna pick from these based on you know, what's really going on for you. So I'd like to pause here and talk about some of the terms. Now, terms that relate to the process itself or iterate, that means to repeat. Iteration, that means I'm using a time box. Oh, what kind of process are we using? Oh, for our process, let's use a time box, a set start and a set end, okay? So we're talking about process. Um, and iterative, which I just blurred out over there. Iterative, um, which we'll talk about as one of those adaptive approaches is um, <laughs> one of those adaptive approaches. But iterate means repeat. Iteration is a time box. And iterative means repeating, 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 repeating. And so what does that mean? I, I make this first version of the product and notice it's orange, orange, orange on the three sides that we see. And then I iterate. So now we're doing those activities again and because we noticed we're changing. So when we're when we're doing this iterative kind of approach, we're going back and redoing those activities. So these could be great when we have innovative projects, things have never been done before, where there's lots of uncertainty, where the, the requirements, like we're gonna know more as the requirements are gonna evolve as time goes on or as we get feedback from, from people. And so it's a lot of prototyping a lot of times with this iterative smudged out approach here iterative, um, lots of prototyping, experimenting. And so here too, we don't launch until the very end because I like to say the iterative is this say yes to the mess type of deal where we're not gonna show the world what we made until we, we get it right, right? And so um, you'll see there too that there's a one-time delivery. So again, open your book so that um, you can see this there. Now, those are words that relate to the process, right? Iterate, iteration, and iterative. Those are all words that relate to like the processes that we see in the developmental approaches. Now, the words that relate to the product itself, the word increment, think of a product increment. This is like a sub chunk, a little deliverable. Sometimes they might call it a micro deliverable, but it's a fully functional sub-deliverable de, sub of what your ultimate deliverable is going to be. And so a lot of times when we're gonna get things out there really fast, notice how here I build the, the red one, the red increment, and then I build another increment on top of it, another, another, another. So we're not who, who switched things around and, and recreating. So you'll see in that chart, uh, incremental, the activities are performed once 
per given increment. Okay, so that's why we get this instead of one time delivery like these two, then we have frequent smaller deliveries. And the goal here is speed because value isn't realized until it's in the hot little hands of those deeming, does this have value to me? Does this have worth, usefulness, or importance? Um, and so that's a good recap of um, incremental. And then according to PMI, um, agile is where we see where we have the, um, also we're repeating till correct. So we're allowed to get feedback, go back and redo things over and over again, but it's not this mess that we can't show the world. We actually are still every single time delivering a fully functional pro product increment, right? And so you get these frequent smaller deliveries. So notice I color coded there. Um, and the goal here is to deliver customer value via getting lots of feedback and learning. Okay, so this hopefully helps you understand why you might pick one versus an, uh, another. So if I was using like really, a really innovative project, I might use an iterative approach and do those prototypes, right? Like we're saying over here where, where we could switch things up. Now, the other thing you'll notice as you read on in your Agile practice guide um, is that there are two subtypes of Agile and I'll write them here. Iteration-based and flow-based. So for these two subtypes of Agile, again, look at your Agile practice guide, iteration-based means we're going to go through those iterations, but rather than with the iterative approach where it's kind of this mess we wouldn't <laughs> show anyone, we're going to let, it, it's going to be completely good to go, okay? Um, and so if we have a time box of two weeks, at the end of two weeks, a fully functional product increment, you could launch it if you want, right? And then another two weeks, always something fully functional. Um, or you can have flow-based agile where the time to release one feature might be different than the time to release another feature. So for iteration-based, Scrum, the Scrum framework is a great example. And for flow-based, Kanban could be a great example there. So those are all our adaptive approaches also not shown in the book, but I'll add in here is that you could actually have the third development approach, a hybrid approach, right? So we have predictive approach. This is our adaptive approaches and all the, the types and subtypes. And then we have a hybrid approach whereby you're taking um, a predictive approach and then you're combining it with one or more of any of these brown ones here. And that's a hybrid approach. And that could be because part of your work involves something where you do have that wonderful, like easily definable work. And you're like, hey, let's use a predictive approach for that. And then there could be other stuff where there's lots of uncertainty. So oh, we're gonna use the agile approach for that particular aspect of the project. Um, I will say too, don't shoot the messenger, that um, <laughs> Ag <laughs> agile is a term that PMI uses in this context in that here's an agile development approach, but they also like to switch the word agile with this word adaptive. And they, they call agile, um, an umbrella term, uh, you know, so as you read the process guide, it says, is agile a framework, a methodology, a this, a that, and they said, it depends, right? We're gonna use it as an umbrella, a, a general term, and so you might also see them use the word agile to mean adaptive and interchange those two words. Um, especially if you're taking the authorized course, you'll see that on a lot of slides. They'll also interchange the word predictive with traditional or waterfall. Um, so I hope this uh, sheds some light. Again, I do expect that you have that Agile practice guide. If you are a member of PMI, you could download it for free. So go do that. It's on page 18. So the book number 18, um, you know, what's stamped on the page of the book. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out. Okay.